Good morning, everyone. Welcome. May the Lord bless you real good for coming into his presence this morning. First reading is Mark 15, chapter 16 to 20. The soldiers led Jesus inside the courtyard of the fortress and called up together the rest of the troops. They put the purple robe on his head. They placed a crown they had made out of thorns. They made fun of Jesus and shouted, Hey, you, king of the Jews! Then they beat him on the head with a stick. They spit on him and knelt down and pretended to worship him. When the soldiers had finished making fun of Jesus, they took off the purple robe, then put his clothes back on and led him back off to be nailed to a cross. The last section is we all say together, Gracious Lord, you were wounded and bruised for my sins. You were chastised that I might have peace. Your flesh was lacerated and I am healed. Create in me the desire and the will to seek the needs of others before my own, even when I am hurting. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. And that leads us into our first hymn this morning, The Lord's My Shepherd, I Shall Not Want. <laughs> Please join me in a prayer, and following the prayer, we'll pray the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with joy in our hearts, rejoicing at a beautiful day, rejoicing in a new day, a new time, rejoicing in the fact that we come into this your house and are welcomed in such a way. We thank you, Lord, for the hymns we sing, for the prayers we pray. We thank you, Lord, for the people we say good morning to. We thank you for the friendliness and the joyous occasion that we have this morning. In our joy, we remember our families and friends, 
and thank you for them. May they have a blessed time this morning. Perhaps they are with us, perhaps they are at home, perhaps they're on holiday, a spring holiday. Whatever the reason, Lord, we just pray that they, you will bless them, guide them, keep them safe. We pray for troubled spots in the world and pray, Lord, that they may be peaceful times, not war and hate, but peace and love. Thank you for this time of fellowship together. We proclaim the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Now together let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now Miriam is going to read our Bible reading this morning, and it's an adaptation of the Gospel of John, chapter 11. Lazarus of Bethany was sick. And his sisters, Mary and Martha, sent word to Jesus. His disciples thought that he would leave immediately and go to Bethany, because they were anxious and eager to go. But Jesus did not leave for another two days, and told them that Lazarus was asleep and that he would wake him. Lazarus had died and was buried when Jesus arrived in Bethany. Martha, the sister of Lazarus, ran to meet him and told him, that if he had been there, her brother would not have died. And then she went on to say something that is very important. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus then told Martha that her brother would rise again. And Martha said to Jesus that she knew that her brother would rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He shall live. Do you believe this? Martha told Jesus that she believed that he was the Christ, the Son of God, who had come into the world. After this, Mary, Martha went to find Mary and told her that Jesus had come and wanted to see her. And immediately... Mary left and went to find him. Those who had come to visit the sisters thought that she was going to the tomb. When Jesus saw that everyone was weeping, he too wept. But this was because he saw their unbelief and he asked where Jesus had been laid. Some of the crowd murmured one with another saying, This man opened the eyes of the blind. Could he not have kept Lazarus from dying? A stone had been laid across the entrance of the tomb, and Jesus asked for it to be removed. But Martha spoke out, saying, Surely not. He has been dead for four days. Jesus turned to her and said, Did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? The stone was taken from the entrance. Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven, saying, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Then Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, who had died, came out of the tomb. He was bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Then those who had come to see Mary and were witnesses to what Jesus had done, believed in him. We thank God for his word today.
Thank you, Miriam. In loving kindness, Jesus came. That's the next hymn we're going to sing together. Heavenly Father, these are our monetary gifts given to you with the love of our hearts. We pray over these gifts and ourselves the givers, and our prayer is that both may be used in your service. Amen. And our hymn before our sermon this morning is Lord of all hopeful.
Well, it's been quite a time since Miriam and I were with you. Over two years have gone by. And it's lovely to be back, and it's lovely to see smiling faces, and it's lovely to hear people rejoicing in the fact that they know that Jesus loves them. Thank you. Thank you for your smile. Thank you for your welcome. Thank you for your voices raised in praise of the living God. Miriam read chapter 11 of the Gospel of John. It tells us about a certain man. And when we read a certain man in the Bible, we know that these words mean business. A certain man, not any man, but a certain man, and his name was Lazarus, puts us in the picture straight away. Miriam told us about Lazarus, how he was ill. Told us about the two sisters, Martha and Mary. How they came to Jesus while Jesus was still on the road. And railed into him. If you had been here sooner, my brother would not have died, said Martha. Now Jesus just gets over that walks a few paces, and lo and behold, Mary comes to meet him and says exactly the same thing. If you had, where have you been? In other words, what have you been doing? Don't you know we needed you? Don't you know that Lazarus would not have died if you had been here earlier? What a welcome, eh? What a welcome, what a bruising. But Jesus took it all in his stride. Because earlier he had said to his disciples, this sickness that Lazarus has is not unto death. He's not going to die because of this sickness. But that the Lord is going to be glorified. The Lord is going to be seen as the Lord wants to be seen not only in this passage of scripture, but in reality, when Jesus walked this earth, the glory of God was going to be seen in the deeds that Jesus did. How about ourselves in this day and age? Do we see the glory of God? Do we go to God to be lifted? Do we go to God to be healed? Do we go to God when we're feeling low? Do we go to him to lift us up? To put the joy back in our lives, the spring in our step, and happiness in our tone? Let me tell you, just over a, nearly two years ago, Miriam and I got a shock when we were told that my brother had succumbed to cancer. And you know, when you hear that about a relative, a close relative, your heart sinks. But instead of wondering why, we immediately prayed to God. And we prayed to God, thanking God for him. Thanking God that he was with him. Thanking God for his healing hand upon him and asking and if it be your will, Lord, you will heal him. Well, he is healed. And he's free from cancer. And I thank God. And I rejoice in that. I rejoice in the fact that God heard my prayer. I didn't say to God, well, where have you been? To allow this to happen? Where were you? To allow this to happen? And I could hear the words of Jesus saying to me, this sickness is not unto death, but that God will be glorified. And God was glorified and is being glorified in my brother's healing. We wake up in the mornings and we wonder what the day is going to hold. And we know for a fact that we're going to hear about the Ukraine 
We're going to hear about the bombing. We're going to hear about the killing. We're going to hear about the misery that people are going through in the Ukraine at this present time. And it's terrible, the time that they are going through. We love them. They are in our prayers. But so are the people in Russia in our prayers. For it is not the people in Russia to blame for what's going on. But the dictator who sits there and tells lies. Father, I pray that his lies will stop. And that a little bit of truth will come out of his mouth. So we think about Ukraine every morning. We wake up, we switch the television on or we switch the radio on and it's pumped into us day after day. War and hate. And it gets you down. But we have a God who is all-knowing, all-seeing, all-hearing. And I take my prayer to him every day. And I don't say to him, why aren't you doing something about the Ukraine? Why aren't you healing the people? Why aren't you stopping this war? And I still hear the voice of Jesus saying, this war is going to end so that God will be glorified, lifted up. It's a special day for you mothers in our congregation this morning, isn't it? A special day for you ladies. A special day, they call it Mothering Sunday. I see there's flowers on the front seat, ready to be given out at the end of the service. Wonderful. Token of respect. A token of love. A token that this is your day. This is your day. I was going to make Miriam her breakfast this morning, but I slept in and I couldn't do it. Sorry about that, love. But next Mothering Sunday, I'll try my best. We come to Jesus with smiles on our faces because this is the fourth Sunday in Lent. The fourth Sunday in Lent leading up, leading up to that great weekend where you have Maundy Thursday, Good Friday and Resurrection Day on the Sunday. A wonderful weekend to look forward to. But what was Jesus doing looking forward to his death? Because he didn't just die on the cross for himself. He died on the cross for you and for me and for the world. Because the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting, eternal life. That's the way I look upon a few weeks' time. We call it Easter. Our Easter celebrations begin with Maundy Thursday, Good Friday, and then Resurrection Day on Easter Sunday. To be resurrected means to be brought alive again. What was, what was Jesus doing going to Lazarus? It was like he was a rehearsal for his own death. Lazarus' death was not due to any illness. He died so that God may be glorified in his resurrection. What did Miriam say? The stone was rolled away and Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth. And he came forward, still wrapped in his grave clothes, with his cloth over his head. But he was alive. He that was dead was alive again. 
Is there any power greater than the power to restore life? I don't know if you, if you watch a certain program on the television. It's on in an afternoon, about four o'clock. Repair shop, that's it. I don't know if you watch the repair shop. It's excellent. It's excellent. They bring things to, the, to those who are perfectionists. They bring them in. Some are rusted. Some still have spiders running from where they've picked their precious box up. And it's laid on the table in front of the expert. Dead as a dodo. can't restore that. What about, what about the, the globe of the world? Smashed. Big holes in it. Little pieces brought so that the expert could piece them together again. And you, I would say, put it in the bin. But they brought it to the expert. Full of holes, full of bits and pieces. But it was going to be made whole again. That which was seemingly dead and gone was going to be made whole again. So that people could put their hands on it. So that people could see the world revolving on its axis. Oh, there's India, there's South America, there's America, there's Canada. Where's the British Isles? Oh yes, there's the British Isles. To be made whole again. To be news to people. So that when people looked at it and saw a mess, they would take another look at it and say, Wow, isn't that marvelous? Isn't that wonderful? Look at it. Can I touch it? Can I pick it up? Of course you can. And they touch it and they pick it up. And it's alive again. Made whole again. When I was dead in my trespasses and sins, Miriam took me to the maker. Miriam took me to the one who knew me better than I knew myself. And I think Miriam must have said to God, can you do anything with him? Because I've tried and I can't do anything with him. You do something with him. Dead in trespasses and sins. I was that bad when I was courting Miriam. I was barred from the house dead in my trespasses and sins I think her mother thought she was a bit loopy going round with a lad like me but I stuck to my guns and I got her in the end and last year we celebrated our diamond wedding anniversary isn't that wonderful because God had touched me all those years ago God had molded me in his own hands and made me whole again. Sins forgiven. All those years ago. And I look back and I think to myself and I say to Miriam, where have all the years gone? Flitted by. But I know that I'm made whole again. I know that God had his hand upon me, molding me, shaping me into the man he wants me to be and he told me he's not finished with me yet. There's still a little piece to put in place. It's like looking at a jigsaw with one piece missing. It doesn't look whole. I thank God for my life in him. 
God alone imparts resurrection power. Resurrection power causes dead things to live again. And resurrection power is made available to us in the name of Jesus Christ. During this pandemic it was difficult to get back into some kind of routine. Did you find that difficult to get back into some kind of routine? Especially on a Sunday when the churches were closed. And I felt myself just drifting. Just drifting through one Sunday after another. Wondering when it is all going to end. Then we found YouTube on the TV. And we tuned into YouTube on a Sunday morning. It's good, isn't it? It's great. It brings us close together. But it's not the same as being here. It's not the same as worshipping through a television or through a computer screen or through a laptop. It's not the same. But here we are in reality, worshipping together, knowing that God is with us, knowing that God has his hand upon us and is making us whole again. Tom, you might have wandered off the pathway, but I've put you back on that straight and narrow pathway. The one that leads to heaven and beyond. Oh, I thank God for his special touch on me. I thank God that he's always there for me. There are many people in this world today who've lost their peace in life. Lost their peace. And in its place comes turmoil or torment. It's not a very nice place to be, tor torment. It's not a very nice place to be, turmoil. Peace is where we should be. The peace of God which passes all understanding. May the peace of God be in you, be in me, be around us, encouraging us to go forward in the name of Jesus, to lift us up again. People's talents are squashed. People's giftings are lying dormant. And God wants to bring what is dead in us alive again. I hope we go out of this place this morning with a smile on our face. I hope we go out of this place this morning talking about the service. I hope we go out of this place because if we don't do that, people will think outside that we've had a terrible time. But we're having a good time, aren't we? Well, two of us are. <laughs> we're having a good time, aren't we? That's another half a dozen. That's good. That's great. God wants to lift your talents up, your giftings up. God is the victor over death and the grave. He has unlimited power to resurrect and his power cannot be quenched. His power, his fire cannot be put out. And here on the fourth Sunday in Lent, we look forward to that special, special weekend. What was Jesus up to from now on until he was resurrected? Find out for yourselves. Read through the Gospels. Read through the John's account of what happened when he was arrested, when he was tried, when he was beaten. Look through the Gospel of John towards that wonderful resurrection day. See where he was, what he was doing. See whom he met. See who he had to put a smile on his face for. See what he was doing when he was scourged and whipped. See what he was doing on that Good Friday. And on that resurrection day. Resurrection day brings a smile to my face. 
because I know that Jesus went through it all, not just for me, but for you. Not just for us, but for the world. The people in Ukraine, the people in Russia, and wherever war is at this present time, Jesus died for everyone, so that everyone could be saved and come to him, glorifying that the road we are now walking on is not the road of our way, but the road of his way. Rejoicing in the fact that we're walking in the master's footsteps. Witnessing. Asking God to keep those doors open. Asking God throughout the week to bring the people who use our premises back again. We can put it all in prayer. Because as I said earlier, God hears every word. Every word we pray. When we're against the odds, when we are backed in a corner, when we are hemmed in by unsurmountable problems, deep within our hearts, we know that there must be an answer to the problem we face. But it seems out of reach hidden behind a door that is locked and there is no way in. But I want, what I want to leave you with this morning is that there is a way in and that God holds the key and if we get that key from him by reading his messages through his word then we shall overcome those seemingly unsurmountable problems. God is good all of the time. And may he bless you real good. Let's have a few moments of silence when we can pray our own prayer for people we know and for people we love, for situations which are known only to us. And in the silence, let us pray to him who knows everything and then I will break into the silence with the prayer of intercession. Lord of all hopefulness, hear our prayers. Father, we thank you for this time when we can think of others, whether it be family, relatives, friends, whether it be for people we do not know, we can think of them and pray for them. Our prayer for the Ukraine and for Russia is that a peaceful solution may be found. That your hands of healing may be placed upon the leaders of nations so that we can live in peace and experience that peace of Christ which passes all understanding. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church, for this building, for this place of witness and wall's end. Long we may continue to witness for you so that our doors may never be closed so that there will be ever, forever, a great welcome. Thank you for those who work hard in this building, keeping it in a pristine condition. Thank you, Father, for them. Thank you for the minister. Thank you for the stewards. Thank you for all 
who willingly put their hand to work in this building. Thank you for our Sunday service. Our prayers of healing go to those who are ill. Our prayers of peacefulness go to those who are racked in pain. Our prayers go to the lonely. And Father, we ask that they may be befriended, maybe by us. Thank you again for this Mothering Sunday. Thank you for our ladies in here this morning. Thank you for our service. And as we come to the end of our service this morning, may God be praised. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is Great is Thy Faithful. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
now and forevermore. Amen.